Well, guys, thank you for dropping by. I really appreciate it. And no worries. Congratulations no. on Accident Man too. Good. Did you uh, did you enjoy the movie? I did indeed. Good. Um, I'll give you my thoughts on it as we go through. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> it's all good, so don't worry. <laughs> so, George, I believe yeah. um, you have an extensive background in stunts. That's right. Harry, your background is more in the directional area. Well, I would say at this stage, we're equally kind of, uh, we have the, 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 in the director's view, because we've, we've done like uh, short films together for like the last like 10 years. Mm. Um, I would say when we work on set, George is more leans towards more of the action because of his stunt experience and stuff like that. And maybe I lean a little bit more towards like story and character kind of thing. Uh, but we both kind of cross over into, yeah. into everything really. But yeah. Yeah. Um, before we go on back to the man too, I've got to ask, um, George, you worked on Justice League and you worked on Batman. And mm -hmm. Batman's the goat. <laughs> nice. So who was your favorite, Affleck or Pattinson? Ah, stuff. I loved uh, I loved the Snyder version of the Justice League Affleck. Uh, I thought Whedon took him a bit too comedy, but um, Pat Smith was wicked. Obviously, a, a different stage of Batman's life and career. You know, I think he played that brilliantly. Um, uh, but for me, Affleck, I love the you know it's the the Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. Big bulking, you know, uh, Batman. I think the warehouse scene. The yeah, warehouse the warehouse scene, scene is still is the, best, the best, the best Batman fight that's yeah. been put on camera for sure. You know, um, so I love, I love that element of it. But yes, that's I mean, they're, they're, there's different elements of strengths and weaknesses for both. I think, but um, I think overall, I'm an Affleck fan. Yeah, <laughs> um, Affleck would be, he would be my second favorite to Michael Keaton. Okay, oh, Keaton's, Keaton's yeah, of course. Keaton. Keaton. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and you also worked on Venom, which puts the question, mm. are you DC or are you Marvel? Well, do you know what? We, we both grew up D DC fanboys, um, but, you know, you can't deny the, uh, you know, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is, you know, well, we're not late, but, you know, like, that's <laughs> <laughs> where Up Endgame, you know, was, was pretty amazing. Like, you know, um, definitely brought us, I think, brought me more towards Marvel just because, you know, over a space of what, 10, 12 years, wherever it was, you know, got really invested in those characters. Yeah. Um, but as actual comic book readers, you know, we were always really DC. Like I was a big Nightwing fan. I was a big uh, Flash. Flash. Yeah, yeah, Flash. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, it was, and we watched all like the, the Justice League. animated. Yeah, Justice the DC League. animated stuff, you know, Justice League. Uh, what, the ba and the Batman. Yeah, uh, Batman, yeah, all that stuff. So, I mean, we, we, I mean, the way I see it is, is that, like you, there's so much to enjoy with both. So like I don't know, I don't need, I don't think you need to take a side, you know. But uh, <laughs> uh, like because I've loved movies from both from both sides. Yeah, 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 sure. And what do you think of the the fan outcry for everyone's favorite melted Ben Affleck to <laughs> play Batman? Well, I mean, like we were just like everyone else back in the day when we saw that kind of uh, leaked audition tape with uh, the Scott kind of thing, and. Uh, you know, immediately to look at him, you're like, yeah, that's that. You know, he could be a great Batman and kind of stuff. So, yeah. uh, and you know, with, with his skill set, and uh, yeah. yeah, he could he could do something really cool. I think uh, it'd be obviously a different take, but uh, I think it could be something fun for sure. Yeah, definitely. It'd be like the warehouse scene on steroids, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So moving on to Accident Man Two, which, by the way, is an amazing sequel. Good, thank you, God. I enjoyed it. Um, so how did you get involved? What drew you to the project? Well, so as George mentioned in his, like, in his stunt work, um, George actually knew Scott from uh, working on um, Doctor, Strange. Doctor Strange. He was the stunt double for Benedict Cumberbatch and Scott was on that movie, obviously, as well. Scott was in, in that movie. So you, kinda, you two kind of knew each other from that. Um, and then also we had made, uh, so me and George had made like a proof of concept for a, an action movie we wanted to make, like a short, a short film. And we showed it to Scott and said, Scott, we'd love you to come and be in this film. Uh, he really enjoyed the proof of concept, but the uh, short version of the story is he was like, I don't really want to play the character you want me to play. So we we're like, okay, no problem. But he's like, love you guys' work. Hopefully we'll get to work together in the future. And then two weeks later, he called us up and said, actually, how would you feel about coming to direct Accident Man 2? So we were like, yeah, amazing. So um, 
he gave us our opportunity really and like i said we owe him a big thanks and um you know the guys over at sony and um uh, samuel goldwyn then trusted us as well so uh, but yeah scott gave us our break really so we'll be you know forever, forever grateful to him for that so yeah yeah had you seen the first movie before or did you have to go and watch it once you got the call we uh once we started talking about it we obviously went straight over and watched the we hadn't seen hadn't seen the first one um so we checked that out and then we're like okay yeah we get we see what this is going to be and so we were like yes yeah, it's, it's up our alley we love martial arts films we love action um the comedy you know, the comedy well. the accidents and stuff so we were like immediately we were like yeah this is something we know we'd be interested in yeah and, and also it's a comic book you know yeah exactly and yeah as soon as we saw that you know got to read the scripts yeah, we could see the potential for yeah you know, the yeah you know, the fun we could have with it and you know the creativity and the you know the action scenes that we could we could develop and stuff. So um, yeah, definitely uh, draw interest straight away, and uh, we're really excited to to come on board. So like delving into the world of Mike Fallon, like how does one go about that? Was it you guys <laughs> talking to Scott, and then he was bringing you like comic material? Did you get to just use like some original stuff from? your own creative minds or how do you put together like some of the accidents because some yeah. of them that are great you know the shuttle <laughs> one <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that, that was one of our ones actually the, the other one yeah the uh yeah the well because the first film is like based pretty closely to a lot of the events in the in the comic whereas this one kind of goes a bit more off on its own we did a lot of our own thing with it um so Stu small who is the writer who's working with, with scott on this they gave us like their their version of the script and we like Scott, they were very collaborative. They were like, you know, bring your own stuff to it. So we definitely kind of we like moved a few things around. We, cha we changed a few things, made a few tweaks to certain characters, and then coming up with accidents is like the hardest thing. <laughs> it's, so hard. it's so hard to. Uh, Stu already had some good ideas in there and stuff, but we had to kind of change some things because we changed the scenes. And it, yeah, like to make things actually look like an accident, it's like really hard. So we spent loads of time just all racking our brains like what accidents we could do there's also a couple of accidents that didn't that we shot that haven't made it into the film uh, so there's a few ones we've got there that maybe you know if there was a next time they could be used um but yeah it's like it's an over-the-top world that's the fun thing like if you haven't got to really stick to reality too much like it's obviously got to feel like yeah, it could happen yeah. but at the same time we've got like a clown with a giant brick you know <laughs> it around. so it's like not like we have to be completely realistic so yeah it was pretty fun just to like yeah. come up with cool ideas and uh, Scott and Stuart had loads of ideas as well, so yeah, it was it was good. And um, you mentioned the clown there. That looked like such a fun sequence to film. What was it like actually watching Scott battle <laughs> the <this> clown? <laughs> yeah, kind of kind of surreal in some ways, but um, <laughs> obviously, had uh, Bo Fowler who played Poco. Um, he, he, he's you know he's a martial artist in his own right and a brilliant actor as well. Yeah, he really brought a lot of. Uh, the little quirky quirky things like the little tune theme tune and stuff to it and you know just uh it was fun you know him do, doing his performance and seeing you know scott's reaction to that like you know it's just just a weird weird thing to to deal with especially you know poco's got this thing where he can't feel pain and stuff so you know scott's giving it his all and it's, you know he's not getting anywhere sort of thing so you know he just has to amp up and amp up and you know well that was one of the things we <coughs> excuse me was uh with we won't really want to uh, originally in the script, they kind of just had this sort of straight fight, you know, uh, but we really wanted to introduce the idea of putting Poco through the middle of the accidents, you know, the ones that we, yeah, we set them up earlier in the film with, with uh, Fred and Mike testing all these different kills out and we just wanted to like put Poco through all these, all these kills that they tried and because uh, he, he can take it, you know, he, he, he wasn't going to die straight away sort of thing. So uh, it was fun because, yeah, you just say, okay, like this is going to, he's going to get, you know, put through a wall, Get toast, circles, uh, toast, get electrocuted, you know, smash over the end plates, put through cupboards, and you know, just yeah, it was good. It was great fun, that, you know. Just uh, and you know, with the you know, production designer uh, Victoria, Richard, Victoria, we just said, look, just make everything in this set destructible, you know, so, <laughs> so if we can just, yeah, uh, you know, we can just it's a little bit of a playground, you know, we can we, you know, just smash everything up, and uh, it's pretty much like Looney Tunes, yeah, style, like, yeah, 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 just, yeah, we just just go for it. But yeah, it's great. It's great fun um, to shoot for sure. Well, compared to the first movie, the first movie is sort of action thriller. Did you find this one here to be a bit more fun in the sense that now we've established the character in the first one, you could open up and have more fun with him in this one? 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Scott came to us immediately and said, you know, him and Stu wanted this to be more, uh, more of a comedy, like more, you know, more fun, you know, that kind of stuff. And we wanted, um, we wanted this character for a bit of a, you know, he goes for a bit of a change in this film. He kind of realizes that friends are important and all that kind of stuff to him. So um, we had like obviously Perry Benson back as Fred and then George Fouracres playing George, uh, playing uh, Dante, who was like hilarious and he was just like brilliant to work with. So putting those two characters with Scott's character kind of helps you, you know, make, make Fallon more of a relatable, like, likable character. Because, you know, the first film was very dark humour kind of thing. And um, if you stop and think about any of these characters, they're all like terrible people who are like murderers and, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. But we were, that's why we wanted to make it as fun as possible. And same as what Scott wanted, because you want to root for these characters. You want Fallon to win and you want him. So uh, making it a bit more like, yeah, fun and exciting, I think just helps with that, helps you like root for those characters more. Um, every action fan is probably wondering the same thing. Um, it's not on the chirpiest of notes, should we say, but um, when the charges came out against Zara, who starred in the film, did that call for you guys to go in and do some last minute edits? Um, so unfortunately, we had, we had finished, we had fully finished the film one, once that news came out. So, uh, you know, we're not a big budget film, so it was kind of a matter of, uh, keeping it as small as possible. She's in, she's in a, a very small amount of film, but um, yeah, it was unfortunately not much we could do at that time once, once, we, once we found out. But um, yeah, uh, a, a, a rubbish situation, a bad situation, you know. Yeah, you mentioned the, the budget. Yes. You can tell this was an average B movie. It was so, everything was shot so well and the production looked so high. Um, how long did you guys have to shoot the movie? That's yeah, well, the basic couple of weeks, right? So we really appreciate you saying that because, uh, yeah, <laughs> we we wanted to try and make it feel as uh, as high production value as possible. Um, we got we had the advantage of shooting in Malta, so everything looks cool anyway. You know, it's good locations and that kind of stuff. But uh, we had twenty two days to shoot the whole film, um, and for an action movie, yeah, it's like a not a, a long time. I put it in perspective. I know they're obviously much bigger movies, but the latest uh, James Bond movie had 125 days to shoot and we got 22 so like you know it's a, <laughs> it's a pretty tight pretty tight schedule so yeah we we did a lot of prep to make sure that once we were on set we were ready to go kind of thing because we didn't have any time to waste or you know yeah and i think uh you know a lot, a lot of it you know looking nice is owed to our dop uh Rich. richard bell um you know he you know he's a very experienced dop and he just he's very calm very um, relaxed guy he knows exactly where to put the lights and made it very easy for us to shoot quickly so you know especially for the fights where we need we want to be able to move shoot, shoot 360 and not have to change lighting setups and stuff you know he just you know he set the lights and that was it and we were away we're shooting you know obviously for close-ups and things we bring lights in and stuff but uh for the general for the most part he, you know, he was able to yeah, make it look really nice and uh yeah and if, if he hadn't collaborated with us the way he did we yeah we would have been screwed basically like he he made it so that we were never waiting for him that, for the lights to be set up. So yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, great. Yeah, and he had, obviously he had a great team around him, great camera crew, uh, gaffer, light. You know, all, all the crew on the on this were were brilliant and uh, worked really hard. Uh, you know, to make sure we achieved what we wanted to achieve. And um, yeah, yeah, really lovely people as well. Yeah, like uh, to, to for it to look like it does for the budget. You know, everyone has to be kind of you know bringing their A game kind of thing. So we felt that felt that happened. So yeah, the movie as it doesn't come across as if you shot it in three weeks uh, the production <laughs> values the fight scenes everything's superb and Ed, you you wouldn't even have a notion okay great good that's good that's what we want <laughs> but out of all the fight scenes in the movie which one is your favorite i'd say okay so from a straight martial art fan like straight fight the yumi versus the yumi versus fallon is probably like just the coolest straight out fight in the, in the movie, in my opinion. But right. they all have like something that they that's cool. Like Poker, like we said, yeah. very Looney Tunes. Sue Ling's fights are like funny and there's loads of cool stuff there. Uh, Faisal, who plays uh, Yendi, we've got the locations there and he's like size. So he brings that cool like loom in. So, and it's only the real, apart from Poker, kind of real weapons fight in the in the movie. You know, uh, you see, get to see Scott with the, with the bow staff, um, uh, which is something he doesn't get to do a lot. Yeah, yeah. Peter, Peter Lee Thomas bringing the kind of like 
Brad Pitt feel and the <laughs> and the, the way he's trying to kind of get his hand, hands on Suling, that kind of stuff. So yeah, everyone. And I love, I don't want to say too much, but I love when Suling gets the change, he gets to do some cool stuff with that. So yeah, like we try to make every fight, I think every fight feels something a bit different. You know, they're not all just straight martial arts fights kind of thing. Every yeah, it, even the opening fight with uh, Suling and Fallon, you yeah. know, was just a bit sh- stupid and <laughs> funny, you know, we just wanted it to be you just want to have fun with it. That's the thing. You just want people to have fun, really, and just, you know, sit back and enjoy the ride. That's... Yes, escape for a little bit. Just, yeah, switch your brains off. Well, not switch your brain off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, just enjoy the fights for what they are, you know. Just, they're just, some of them are just stupid, but they're funny. <laughs> <laughs> so after the dust settles, um, after Accident Man 2, what's next for you guys? So, can't say too much, but we are in, you know, we are in talks for a, uh, uh, a feature film that we've written so we're looking at that so um, hopefully that's going to be that's going to come into fruition soon the uh, the dream project off in the distance would be uh, to make the next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that was when we grew up <laughs> that's what we love um, and obviously that involves some martial arts and some action and stuff also right, we were big we were big uh, Dragon Ball Z geeks we were growing up we loved uh, Dragon Ball Z so that'd be like another dream project but at the moment yeah we've had some offers we've got some things happening so uh we can't say too much yet, but hopefully you'll see more from us saying yeah. And on a final note, if you had to sell Accident Man 2 on the spot right now, how would you sell it? Uh, insane action, great <laughs> comedy, uh, and just generally fun. I know that word, word gets thrown around a lot, but this genuinely is a fun movie and you'll have a, just a good fun time watching it. I couldn't agree great. more. <laughs> <laughs> Right, guys, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And congratulations on the release of Accident Man 2. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Cheers, Cheers, Jeff. See you guys. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.